Hi there, this is Alan Robert, and I am going to show a quick guide on five top tips for Dragon Ball Xenoverse. This is just putting five things together that I think new players should know about the game. So, without further ado, let us move on and have a quick look at a character that I power leveled the other day from scratch, just destroying a Cyberman. Which will not take very long at all. With Final Flash. They were at level one for that as well, that's great. Okay, so at number five, how to create a character. And what you want to do, I've got a few characters already set up here. So my answer is the character that I started the game with. Basically played it through as me, I designed it how I kind of wanted it. Didn't really assign the stats, whereas with Prasanna, more focused on different stat type and a proper build. If you don't get a build quite how you want it, you can always collect Dragon Balls and you can have another shot at life. But now I'm going to go through the character creation system. I'm going to go for a uh, Freezer Clan called a Nippy because it's kind of a pun on being cold and fast and free to clan are very, very fast. The sliders do make an impact on what happens. The taller you are, I think the slower you are, but harder you hit or something like that. I've not really bothered with these, they make small impacts. You make impacts from other things as well, like your Z souls, your clothing, and your stat distributions from the uh, leveling up kind of things. Um, with characters as well, you kind of want to build them as to how you want to play. You'll play through the story mode first when you only have one character. You want to know what you like doing and you can go for anything and you can adjust. My advice would be to that at every saga's end, go back and play through the parallel quests associated. You start off with very few skills available to you. So by doing parallel quests, you not only get a lot of experience, but you will unlock a lot of skills as well. And unlocking the skills, the clothing, other items and that, absolutely paramount to your success. So every time you go through a saga, go back, do the parallel quests, unlock things, level up, and it'll bring you up to a level for other missions. Of course, you won't always get the drops you want, so just keep on retrying those missions, especially if you're really struggling with level or whatever. And so like, immediately, I quite like the coloration of that character. I probably should have adjusted a few more bits, like the eye colour. But um, I was going for like a cold kind of feel, but also with a racing kind of feel to it, like British Racing Green. I just got bored in the end, thought it looked good enough. I should have done the eyes though, to be fair, because with the red eyes it looks kind of stupid. Uh, however, I kind of like this character, and it'll change colours as well because of clothing and like, items and accessories, which I'll go, through, go over in a second when I've picked a voice. Voice 10 will do fine. I said I was going to call character Nippy because it's a play on cold and fast. So, yeah, I am apparently five. Right, so you get to pick which starter, starting skills you start off with kind of thing. This one would give you more close combat things. Unfortunately, at this point, I haven't really unlocked any kind of ultimates that offer strike. And I'm going to build this entirely strike character, so I'll have to go back and grind a few quests on that. Uh, however, there, I'll show you a little bit more about that. You'll get different skills. Here's the default skills that it gave me. Uh, I don't really want some of the things it's given me at all. I kind of want this to be a Kaioken character as well, to be fair. But I want maximum charge to boost up uh, key. And then you can get a couple of other things uh, that can help drain other characters, but I've not unlocked that many of the drains yet. You can drain key and stamina from other characters with different melee attacks. But I've not got them yet. As you can see, I've not really got anything suitable for a strike character on the ultimates. There's also a great move called Angry Shout, which is an escape move that boosts up your key again. I don't really have anything here that goes well with the appearance of the character. I don't really want him to be wearing Piccolo's turban, just because it would cover up his funny shaped head. Z Souls as well have different impacts. You see, they give attribute, attribute bonuses, which is the top part. They can be equipped by different races and things. But then underneath, you also get some flavour text, which explains where else it goes, where it came from, and other impacts it will have on the game. Moving on to tip four, and I've moved on to a different character. I'm back to Frisana here, uh, as you'll see. So you've got different parallel quests, as I mentioned, and they will have different impacts on the game. So you can unlock different things. Uh, there's Cybermen's Revenge. You can get the move Giant Storm, which is an amazing key blast move for area of effect damage. Meanwhile, if you go down a little bit further, you'll see different quests, different star ratings as well on them, which are unlocked after different sagas. Blue Hurricane there from the two star one. I used to get an area of effect strike move from uh, Berta's repertoire. These moves are incredibly useful on two of the story quests, um, which are 
mildly infamous, shall we say. One's not too bad. It's in the Majin Buu saga, and I'll show you which one in a minute. The other one that you've probably heard people complaining about at some point. Especially if you've watched the uh, Team 4 Star plays, I believe, that they kept on like, in comments and titles criticising the stupid Bardock mission, I seem to remember it being called. The Bardock mission is tough. Basically, you want to hit as many people at once as possible, but I'll show you where to get these things. I've completed playing through the story though, so I can just go straight to the time nest, show you where they are. So, run, Frusano, run! Okay, I've also got the DLC, so you'll see two little robots here that gave the missions as well. Don't want to talk to them, they're annoying. Let's walk on the grass, stick it to the Supreme Kai of time. So, if we go up here, I think the video cuts off unfortunately, but you want those better things for those missions. Right, another aspect that's really useful is power level and characters. So we've gone back to Nippy, you can see he's still level 1, we've not done anything with him. Right, so you want to go to 7 star parallel quests that are unlocked when you basically completed everything. You want to do Great Ape Festival first with a higher level character. You don't want to do that with a level 1, it's going to be a nightmare. Do it with the character that you started with, then you unlock this one, Dangerous Duo Warriors Never Rest. It's a Dragon Ball Collection mission. You will be fighting against level 80 Broly. Except you can almost completely ignore him, it's fantastic. So, we've picked Nippy, get some fodder characters, you can get some reasonably strong ones if you've got the DLCs, or unlock things with the Dragon Balls, like Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, and then Random has given us Yamcha. Yay, Yamcha. Great cannon fodder, he dies pretty much every time. Uh, but never mind, you'll see him as well get it handed to him. Right, so basically what goes on here is you get the Dragon Radar up here in the bottom right. It will show you with little white dots where the Dragon Balls are. You'll see that any second now. Please so, as we move, the little area. white dots appear, that's a Dragon Ball. As soon as you touch the first Dragon Ball, Broly appears. When Broly appears, there he comes. Anyone Shortly after, Vida will appear. He will start fighting people, but you can oh, just ignore him. Now, the other thing about this mission is it does have an ultimate finish, which is if you defeat Broly, before getting all three of these Dragon Balls, Broly will then get back up with more Dragon Balls appearing. So long as you don't let all of your allies die effectively, I believe you have to keep Gohan alive if he spawns, and he will only spawn if Fidel is beaten, and I think Trunks and Goten are defeated. I don't know if anybody else appears. However, we've delivered two Dragon Balls out of three. We only need three to start off with. Notice that we've completely ignored Broly. I, I don't think we've even seen him. Now I'm mad. Uh, oh, he's over there. Okay. We've deposited the third Dragon Ball, though. We're starting off at level one, zero experience. And we'll just see what happens. <laughs> Getting a lot of experience there. Look at that. Just look how strong my Boom. apprentice is. <laughs> Gone up to level 15. Quite good. Quite useful. Another aspect I wanted to show as well was mentor boosting. Now you heard Hercule's voice, actually we've called this a little bit before, I literally just got Hercule as a mentor, uh, got his move, so I've put it on my character. Explosion Dynamic is a fantastic mission to do this on. It's a one-on-one -on -one fight against Full Power Freezer, who's not that strong when you got a fair way through the game. Now you'll see on my moveset here, I've got Dynamite Kick, that's the first move Hercule teaches you. I, if I were you, I'd have a preset with his moves. Right, select Hercule to back up twice if he is your mentor or whoever your mentor is. I would have a moveset where you contain all the moves they teach you. Even if they're completely against the build of your character, have a separate sort of skill set, different preset. Because when you go talk to them afterwards, which also helps boost their mentor level, they will challenge you and most of the time they will want to fight you using the skill you've learned. Now I'm not going to fight here very well because I can't be bothered, it's so simple. I'm just trying to build up maximum charge so I can go Super Saiyan. Keep on getting hit because Hercule is just terrible fodder. Uh, this is also another great mission to do. It's really short, maximum time of 5 minutes. And also, if you beat Freezer fast enough, you'll get Time Patrol in training appear afterwards. Which is really useful. Now I'm spamming diamond, uh, Dynamite Kick, even though it's pretty terrible. Because the more you use the skills they teach you, the more their affinity for you goes up. Eventually though, I'm just going to get bored because I want the Time Patrol to appear. Uh, so I've got Special Beam Cannon, which I don't normally use. It's been a while since I've used it. It's great if you've got Piccolo as a mentor because it breaks through guard as well. Here's another little tip for you for free there. Um, and I've got Kakameha. Kame Kameha. I'm stuck in there because it's quick. Um, but yeah, as you can see, 
Time patrol in training. Soul Asteroid 88, I believe that one is. I keep on seeing that one appears. They'll come and fight you. Just regain some key. When you beat them, you get a chance at getting a Dragon Ball. It'll come up saying you've acquired a material item, and maybe a key item. Or, I believe I get two material items here, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, yeah. You know, it's a bit chancy. The only thing about this one is that in order to get them to appear, it's not the most efficient at getting the Time Patrol to appear. They won't always appear. They should do. But this was the third attempt to try to get them to appear. So, you know, more on that in a second. I'm the greatest teacher in existence. You hear Satan talking and bang. Uh, you, uh, uh, maybe working a the better bit you do, hard. more experience you get. I don't know if that matters in terms of his boost. Anyway, on to number one. And here is Dragon Ball spamming. So there's three missions I want to talk about. Prepare for the attack of the Saiyans. You need to beat Krillin, Yamcha and Tien. Then a patroller may appear. Not the fastest method. We've just seen the explosion of Namek, which is pretty quick. Again, though, you have to actually basically finish the level in order to get the time to appear. Fierce Battle Ginyu Force. This is the best one, in my opinion. It's an easy-ish level. Decent ultimate finish as well. If you do it in under five minutes, Freezer appears. Beat him up. Not that hard. You're just fighting the Ginyu Force. They're not that difficult, really. So I'm just going to stick on a couple of random characters here. Kick uh, Team Gohan and... Yamcha, because why not? I'll show you how cool I can anyway, I had a few attempts at recording this one, which went a little bit annoying, and you'll see my frustrations in a second, but you'll see why it's so easy. So basically, you start off uh, outside Capsule Corporation, I believe it is. You've got to defeat all Ginyu Force members. However, right just around this corner in front of us, you see where I fly, there should be a Time Patroller in training. Don't always appear. I was getting very, very lucky with this the other night. I had them appear pretty much every time I tried the mission. Almost every time I tried it, one appeared. And about half the time when I fought them, I was getting key items, which are Dragon Balls. So I got two wishes in about 40 minutes, half an hour, something like that, which is quite good. Uh, I got the Journey to the West set. Mm. It was all right. You saw it earlier on for Sana. Uh, not the best equipment ever, but it's pretty good. Four star Dragon Ball, I think, is better in every respect. It lowers your strike more, but boosts everything else more. So you can just keep on restarting here at the start. Doesn't cost you anything. So uh, I'm about to get fed up with it and skip a little bit ahead in the thing because they're just not appearing. So here we go. You can see in the distance there is a little question mark. One has appeared. So charge up, as Dragon Ball is quite famous for. We'll fly around the corner. I believe it's Soul Asteroid 88 again. I keep on finding him at the moment. He's just always there. Now they get a little bit of an advantage over you with the fact that they can lock straight onto you, whereas you can't lock onto them until you've spoken to them. I had to go Super Saiyan first, so I'm at power so I can just spam them. This wasn't the most efficient I've ever been on this one. He managed to get away from me a couple of times. But they're always good when they're a nice squishy character. Unfortunately, you want to full final flash, which usually one-shots everybody. And then he managed to block that by using his ultimate as well, which is a shame. However, he shouldn't survive a second one. Right, it says you've got material item. That's a Hercule badge. You can sell them for a fair amount as any. However, it could also say you got key item. That would be amazing. Anyway, thank you for watching.